It's a Monday morning and welcome to Off the Press, the program where we'll take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. With me to do so this morning would be Libra Soshoma in studio and Ai Osori joining us remotely from Germany. Good morning, Ai. Good morning, Amaka. Okay, just to be sure that we can hear you and Libras, good morning to you also. Yeah, good morning and um, from Nigeria to Germany, good morning. <laughs> All right, this morning we'll be taking a look at a couple of papers, but we will begin with the punch uh, newspaper. It would be displayed, uh, already displayed, thank you so very much. So I'll take very quickly the headlines, i.e. if you can hear me, because I'll be beginning with you. It says less than 30% of the fuel depot operating. That's according to Dapman on page 22. And then we have office invasion. Minister and Dabiri Erewa fight dirty on social media. That story is on page 7. Buhari's aid and others fought 1 million naira fine against the UK airline. That's also on page 22 of the Punch newspaper. And if you look to your right, there we have the COVID-19 update, uh, national and of course globally. Nationally, we are at 7,839 cases, 2,263 already discharged and 226 deaths recorded in Nigeria. But on the global scenes, we have, we have risen to 5.4 million and uh, 346 deaths, I believe, recorded. Now, the big story for the Punch newspaper, Kano and Katsina, but no Muslims, Sean Sultan and the presidential task for storm prayer grounds. Worshippers disregard physical distancing, uh, face masks. FCT satellite town dwellers move uh, en masse to Nasarawa for prayers. And Lagos discharges 31 COVID-19 patients as national cases hit 7,839. If you scroll up a little bit more, uh, we should be able to get more stories on the Punch newspaper. But before we get to that point, we might as well just begin the conversation. Okay, we, you can see some more picture stories there displayed. Buhari observes each uh, prayer in the villa. A bit of social distancing there, yes, and the wearing of face masks. Well, that story is on page two. Federal government begins work on ocean incursion into Ondo on page six. Housemaid faked death to escape mother's financial pressure. Wow, that story is on page four, and that's according to the police. Kashamu petitions IG over PDP office invasion alleges assassination on page 16. Now, Southwest states work out plan on Amotekun collaboration. What happened to Amotekun, by the way? The story is on page nine. Uh, cops chasing suspected kidnappers shoot teenager performing ablution. Such a sad story on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. Now, U.S. returnees accuse NCDC of abandonment and threatens showdown on page seven. And that's it on the Punch newspaper. I will go over to Ai now. Ai, can you hear me? Can Aisha hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so let's begin with uh, the Eid celebration. Uh, one of the, the headlines there is uh, indicating or rather implying that social distancing was not observed and people moved out en masse to prayers. You are a Muslim yourself. Tell me, first of all, how did you celebrate in Germany before we go into the matters? Well, quiet Eid here for me in Berlin. I didn't go anywhere. I had received from WhatsApp from a dear friend who had explained how we can observe our Eid prayers at home and what, between what period of time. So there's usually there's a ritual. You wake up after the morning after Ramadan, you eat dates to break your fast because you've been fasting for the last three months. Mm. And then you now, you know, go with your family and friends to the mosque. But this time, after the dates, you just pick, you know, a time that you all want to meet if you're in a household and you all pray together and you, you continue from there. I heard stories of churches here in Berlin opening up their space for Muslims to pray, but honestly, I stayed at home hmm. and, and observed physical distancing. I think the stories about uh, the some of the Muslims who shunned the advice of the Sultan and in, and in a way also shunned the advice of Mecca and Saudi Arabia where social distancing was taking place and where there was no large congregations in the Holy Mosque, the Kaaba. I think it was one of the interesting pictures I saw was in Kano, I think, where there was like a plexiglass between 
the the VIP section mm. and the and it made me laugh because I thought you know you know wow. as you in like yeah wow really wow mm. if if first of all you say religion is supposed to bring you together mm. but you want to separate yourselves from the have not so of course in the VIP area there was you can see the lush mats on the floor everybody was wearing their their masks you could see that everybody had a mask on but on the other side where it was more densely populated behind the shield. Um, and for me, it was a good metaphor of what Nigerian government is, or what Nigerian government looks like and is experienced by the regular person, where we keep the government want to flout the rules. They don't they think they're above the rules, but they want other people to obey the rules and they don't care who they put in in danger. I really think that um, we had lost over the last couple of weeks very important uh, opportunities to signal yeah. to the 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 masses the importance of physical distancing and that started obviously with the way the burial of the late chief of staff was handled that might have been a very very important minute uh, moment uh, to make people understand the need for behavioral change mm -hmm. in terms of how we do things going forward but we miss that as usual yeah. and on the other side i just want to point out that i keep hearing people say things like why can't nigerians self-regulate but we are an abused generally abused citizenry where between colonialism and the military rule where we have to be flogged and beaten, we're a very patriarchal, hierarchical structure where everybody needs to be ordered, shouted at, beaten. So you can't expect people to suddenly start behaving logically when you haven't sort of groomed society to not only trust their leaders, but to also trust themselves and to know that they can, they are responsible for them also, as opposed to always looking to authority. So when you have this clash where the sultan is saying one thing, mm -hmm. but the local imam is saying another thing, what do you want people to do? Hmm. So we have a long way to go. Interesting. Thank you for that perspective. Uh, Libras. Yeah, um, I will try to quickly run through all of them. You hmm. know, because uh, almost all the headlines you read out, um, the, there's one connecting thread. Right. And then, um, like Aisha had said, it is us against you know, them or them against us. Starting from the opportunity to actually you know, um, educate um, and um, sensitize the people on the need for them to have more confidence in the government. And then you find out that, that government attitude towards you know, the pandemic is almost, like I said before, it's almost as if uh, this is pandemic and not a pandemic mm. because they say one thing and they do another thing. I had a, starting from the president, um, there is, don't give me, don't tell me stories of President Trump not wearing masks because even Americans are not happy and they, they, they consistently, you know, say that he's not serious in fighting, even if for nothing at all, mm. at least for public campaign and awareness. I, I think that's very significant. Then secondly, you find a situation where you ask people not to, you know, um, gather in large numbers and that if you must gather in large numbers, there should be a limit to these numbers. But the same people who are asking you not to gather in large, large numbers, they create a segregation amongst themselves and then create that opportunity. What stop you from, like Aisha had explained, you know, gather with your family that you have always been together and say prayers. Mm. You know, it's, and, and, and then you have a situation where the U.S. returnee also are complaining and of abandonment by the National Center for Disease Control. Yeah. And so all this also points to the fact that there's something missing here. You quarantine people and then you abandon all of them. It's, you know, so when you put all of this together, you, the only answer you will get, like Fela will say, is that there is more questions than answer. answers. And then lastly, on this, uh, uh, then you have a situation where you're complaining of a flight violating the rule. Yeah. And then you rather than, that rather than, you know, use that as an example to, to um, you know, send a very make strong a signal, make a strong statement, you give them a fine of one million naira, and then you know you begin to ask yourself, you know these are fines that can be paid from the back pocket. If this had happened in their country, you probably be talking of a fine of one million dollars, mm -hmm. you know. So and then this, all this put together, how do you now convince the people that really you, you means well or you mean well or that, you know, indeed mm -hmm. what you say is you is actually it. you know the situation. All right, I let me come to you. Um, the thought on the UK flight that, you know, was uh, fined, do you think one million is justified or is not enough? Or should they have even done the wrong thing in the first place, just in front, you know, in the midst of the pandemic? Of course, they should 
in the first place. And it makes me think about, again, what our processes and procedures are. How could this have happened? I'm trying to imagine how this would happen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, please. Yes, Clearly. I'm, I'm trying to imagine how this would happen in another country, as Liberos pointed out. So for me, the fine is, it seems like a slap in the wrist. Um, if you look at many of our laws in Nigeria, you see very remarkable fines in terms of how small they are compared to the prison time. So you would say everybody will always pay the fine as opposed to do the do the time, so to speak. So what is behind this uh, plane for me? The larger issue is just what we see about an incoherence around how we're doing things as a country on the federal level and maybe even on the state level. If we had more collaboration between the different agencies, which might speak to and tangentially to one of the headlines that we just read out this morning about the two government agencies, Diaspora and uh, Ministry of um, in, in Communication, yeah. uh, having a spat on, on social media. It just yeah. shows how disjointed the government is. Because I'm, I'm quite sure that maybe on one hand, the aviation have their rules, and whoever was in charge of allowing that passenger, that flight to come in, had their own rules, and they were not talking to each other. So mm -hmm. what do we do to have a more joined-up yes. response on the federal level? To what's going on with the pandemic right. for me that's a larger question and the fine okay so uh, we, we will go to the next paper now in the interest of time uh, it would be displayed and then uh, we'll read out the headlines as agreed and then we you can both uh, intervene but before that happens yes liberals you're about to say something yeah um same same thing um, on on the issue of uh, not just the fine now um, Abike and the minister fighting dirty on social media. Social media. I, I think that um, this shouldn't be encouraged because it doesn't also tell well of, um, it doesn't speak well of the government mm -hmm. and doesn't speak well of information management in as far as government is concerned. We have seen consistently how, you know, the interagency rivalry in this government and this is not the time for it, you know, to even be, to, for anybody to think about it, not to talk of even, you know, taking the level it has gotten to. Yeah. And, 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 and I had expected that if there is, you know, any problem at all, there should be a, a channel of uh, information management. There should be, you know, a department for doing that. And also, governance shouldn't be about, you know, personal ego or personal sentiment. If there mm -hmm. are processes, I think these processes should follow. And one other thing that is lacking is enforcement, uh, monitoring and enforcement of rules. Mm -hmm. You know, there should be... At all levels. Yes, there be. should be a department for discipline if these rules are, are flouted by any, 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 anybody at all. You have, um, um, you know, the Office for Special Duties. And I, I also think that in government, these are some of their responsibilities. And, and, and so, and if you're not sure, there's need to always cross-check with the appropriate agency. But when you have multiple agencies doing the same thing, and then you have, um, roles are definitely going to crisscross. And since there is no coordinating, you know, office to coordinate all of these roles, mm -hmm. you're certainly going to have these um, issues where one minister will say another one thing. And another department will say different things. Essentially, we shouldn't be washing our dirty linen. Exactly. Outside. All right. Let's go to the next paper now, um, which is The Guardian. It says, panic as Buhari probes Abakiari's office and others. That's on the front page. You can see that story is displayed there. Um, presidency aids silence amid in intrigues. That, that's on the front page. And of course, the picture story is from the celebration of Eid uh, yesterday. Uh, we can see bit of social distancing, if you like, face mask, uh, but is it enough? Well, more questions than answers. Okay, we still have the global figures on COVID-19. President Oke's funding of COVID-19 research and others. Medical Directors Guild uh, laments daily. Catholic sec Secretariat tax federal government on local cure and how media should report pandemic. Okay, very interesting uh, headlines there. There doesn't seem to be m more happening there. Uh, but I, very quickly, um, what's your thoughts? President Oke's funding of COVID-19 research and others, is, is it now time? What stopped us from doing this long time ago? Or we should just be grateful that anyways, it's happening. I think we should just be grateful it's happening, honestly. And better late than never. So we're glad. Let's just hope that the protocols for using the, the funds that have been disbursed will actually be used the way they are supposed to. Mm -hmm. There'll be the usual transparency and accountability and civil society and the media will play their role in tracking 
the way those research funds are, are being spent and that we'll see the results at the end of the day. If we're saying, we're speaking about African pride and Nigerian pride and all that, while the rest of the world, we're constantly hearing how they're working on vaccines here mm -hmm. and they're collaborating, it would be nice to know that in Africa and in Nigeria, we're also contributing to the science out there. So for me, better late than never. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they do with it and keep our fingers crossed Cross. and let's be positive. Mm -hmm. I Just quickly, I know you said quickly, but I noticed that on The Guardian, just one of the fallouts of COVID, I just saw a, a story about a pregnant wife dying of neglect at a mm -hmm. general hospital. And this came to, I think, one of the first conversations I think I had with you on this platform where I'd said, you know what, why is it not possible for us to say at this time that let some hospitals be COVID-free hospitals. And yeah. in a way, I think that's what these centers are supposed to be. These isolation centers are supposed to keep the infected away from the general population. But why is it that our, our, our healthcare professionals don't sort of have the compassion to understand that they need to still do their job? Babies are still going to be born. People are still going to have malaria, typhoid, all the other things that we, we deal with on a, on a daily basis before the pandemic started and play their role in making sure that they're saving lives. You know, if it's a matter of PPE, then let us hear what the problem is. Let them speak up. Instead of this haphazard, you know, we keep hearing stories that are very discouraging. The other day, a woman bled death because she was held on her way to the hospital because army police stopped her as usual. You know, this, these stories is one story, but you've just ruined a family's life. You've just put a family in sorrow. Mm. So we, we, we hear these stories in isolation, but we don't think about if it happened to us, how would we feel? Right. Thank you very much. I, uh, Libras, can I come to you now? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> same, same thing. Um, I, in every of, uh, in most of these hospitals where they have isolation centers, I think the isolation centers are different from um, the hospitals. Like uh, the Bagada General Hospital, mm -hmm. this isolation center is different. The RENA, the, the re, former RENA center, and then, you know, a makeshift isolation center. I also expect that, you know, and these places are barricaded. Right. So I wonder why, you know, the other hospitals would still want to treat or attend to people as if, you know, everybody that came to the, comes to the hospital is a COVID-19 you know, patient. COVID patient. I saw, you know, um, somewhere where somebody snapped um, a receipt that they paid at the general hospital and then um, for a simple malaria drug, and it was um, tagged the uh, COVID, COVID patient. Oh, wow. It, yes, uh, and, and, and so, which, is, which is very, very bad. And so because of that, a lot of people now are even scared to, to go, go to, to hospitals. hospitals. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those deaths, it's either we don't take statistics of them, or when we do, we just add them as COVID patients. And then also, um, another area we should also look at is this idea of, you know, cops shooting, he, um, um, uh, indiscriminately. Um, yeah. In the previous newspaper yeah. we read, Punch, you also saw where a cop shot um, at a teenager. Mm -hmm. Was performing ablation. Yes, exactly. And, and, and so these are not issues that we should, this modern day, we should be talking about. Then lastly, the probe of the office of, um, there's allegation that I just want to, to think, I would want to assume that this would, is, would end up as mere allegations. Mm. Because um, the presidency, I learned, is silent. It shouldn't be that the new chief of staff is probing the appointments of the, the former chief of staff, you know, because it's all one presidency. And then when you probe appointment, definitely, like we do in Nigeria, any um, new cook that comes to the kitchen would want to find out how he can slot his own people into certain areas. I hope that the probe is actually, you know, um, for is holistic mm. and well intended, and not meant for which hunting, you know, associates of the former chief of staff, or or to would that be necessary, you know to score really? a cheap political point, mm. you know. So if if it is holistic and it is well intended, then definitely it's necessary if it is to avoid pit pitfalls, you know, find out, you okay. know, the mistakes that were made in the, in past, the past and uh, and find a way of correcting them so you don't make the same mistake. But if it is uh, to enhance personal gain and then find a way of also, you know, enhancing your own, uh, 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 to feather your own nest, mm. then it won't be, you know, in, in, in good light. And then on, lastly, on the cure, yes, it is good that we begin to fund them. Um, 
you research. know, research. Better late than never, like Aisha <laughs> said. Yes, like I, you I said. thought we should be happy. But, <laughs> but, you know, even when she said that we should be happy, you could <laughs> see, you know, the, 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 the her expression it's, speaks it's otherwise. It's a case of half bread yes, is better it's, it's the same thing for me, you know. You know, what it shows also, it's, you know, you look at government as a government that is really not ready or not serious about, about these things. They say one thing and they do another. Right from the right from November when it happened in China, I think we ought to have been preparing, you know, for a thing like this. If it happens, what do we do? Mm. It shows that we're not prepared. And now we're beginning to talk, talk about funding for research. It shows clearly that we really were not even ready to research. And lastly, let's ensure that the funds is judiciously used. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm afraid, Aisha, that's where we are going to wrap in the interest of time. We'd like to have more of this conversation, but we are completely out of time. Thank you so very much, Ai. Uh, stay thank safe. You. All right. And then thank you, of course, Libras, for being with us for, from the morning segment till now. And that is how we're going to wrap it on Off the Press. Remember, we do this every Monday to Friday, and the time is 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okuye saying please keep safe out there too.